السلام علیکم فرینڈز ویلکم ٹو انادر ویڈیو آف ڈاکٹر زاکر نائک ویر سسٹر آس کوشچن کلیور کوشچن اور ہی وانٹ ٹو کنٹروز دی ڈاکٹر زاکر نائک دیٹ ہی 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 ٹیل آس دیٹ وی آر تروئنگ بولٹس ان دی ایئر سو ہی ڈائریکٹلی سیٹ ٹو ڈاکٹر زاکر نائک دی یو آلسو تھرو بولٹس ان دی ایئر دین ڈاکٹر زاکر نائک آس کیم دیٹ شو می ویر آئی میک مسٹیکس دین شی واس ان ایبل ٹو آنسر واچ دس ایپک ویڈیو Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my name is Sabina. I'm a student. You gave an example about how we students, the youngsters, uh, shoot an arrow and draw a bullseye. Uh, I would just like to make the same sort of allegation to you. You shot an arrow, your arrow, uh, and drew your bullseye. And now, if anybody does not aim where you have aimed before, they are wrong. That, I think, is inconsiderate and inhuman. Sister asked a very important question. When I gave the example, people shoot in the air and then draw the bullseye. She's saying and alleging, even I have done the same. And if people don't agree, then I don't agree with them. Sister, please tell me where was my arrow wrong? Which part of my lecture was shooting the arrow in the air and drawing a bullseye? I gave example that people do graduation. Why do graduation? I don't know. What you will do? I don't know. After passing, what job you will take? I don't know. I gave example. Now you, sister, give me an example in my lecture. Which part of my lecture was shooting the arrow in the air and drawing a bullseye? If not, then I would tell you that you are shooting in the air and then drawing the bullseye. But you already said it. Sister, which part of my lecture? I give you a chance to reply. Which part of my lecture was shooting in the air and then drawing a bullseye? Your part of the lecture was not shooting in the air. Mashallah, thank you the very much. Aim. The I whole A was like the, why judging people by defining them on the terms of Islamic and what their purpose in life is only in terms of Islamic. You give me a better purpose of life. Why you give I me give a better you purpose. Any? See, we are having open question and session. Anyone can differ with me. I'm not exactly. telling I'm always People right. People differ from you. You, you have the judge. right to differ. But when you differ, you have to give the reason. For example, I say 2 plus 3 is equal to 4. You say, no, it is not 4, it is 5. I'll ask you why. So if I say you something didn't... wrong, you have to prove me wrong. Just by saying 2 plus 2 is not equal to 4, you are educated, sister. Correct? So you, if you tell that I have done something, I agree with you. Prove me. But he, he keeps Kul on speaking. Kul hatu in kundum sadikin. Produce your proof if you are truthful. So tell me which part of my lecture, or you tell me, is there any better purpose of life than to thank the Creator, than to worship Him? Yes, sister. Yes, please could you on the microphone of the sister? Yeah. She wants to educate us. I'm not trying to educate anyone. I, I want think to be educated. I'm a student, sister. I love being educated. You Wait, may not but like you don't let educated. people speak. Sorry? You don't let people speak. You just go on and on. I'm giving I'm you a chance to speak, sister. Speak. There are differences and you cannot just, you know, convert everyone. Convert not in the sense of converting into Islam. Converting people's viewpoints. You know, there are differences. Sister, you are and not answering my question. You are beating around the bush. I'm not my beating question around is, the bush. What That's is the because purpose? you're presuming that you, I will answer whatever you want me to answer. No, sister. I'll answer it in my way. So you're always beating around the bush. I have heard his answer, Bashal. So thank you, sister. Thank you for your comments. And we leave the audience to be the judge. How many people will follow you? How many people follow I me? Don't want we'll come to know later on. So next time when you give a lecture, I hope you get an audience which is big. So then they listen to your answer of purpose of creation, sister. Uh, good evening, sir. My name is Ruby Parker, and I'm a dress designer. This is a question on behalf of my friend. Uh, she is a Muslim and she is married to a Hindu. Okay, but she follows Islam and uh, the husband follows the Hindu religion. And uh, she and her family, they are not comfortable regarding she married to a Hindu. Now, can you put some light on this because she is very confused of what to do. She is madly in love with that man. If I understood your question, sister, you said that there is a Muslim girl who's married a Hindu boy and she's madly in love. What should she do? Is this the question, sister? Right. Has she got married or not? Yes, she is. 
Court marriage. Court marriage. Sister has said that there's a Muslim girl who's married a Hindu boy, she's madly in love. Court marriage, what should she do? The thing is there that Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 221. It says that do not marry a mushrika, do not marry an idolatress until she believes. A believing woman, even if she's a bondswoman, she's much better than an unbelieving woman, even if she allows you. The verse continues that do not marry a mushrik man, do not marry an idolatering man, even if she allows you, until he believes. A believing man, even if he's a bondsman, even if he's a slave man, he's far better than a mushrik man, unbelieving man, even if he allows you. So in Islam, a Muslim girl cannot marry a non-Muslim man. And as I told earlier, the reason is that if you have a vehicle, one tire of the vehicle is of a cycle, of a bicycle, and the other tire, it is of a truck. But naturally, the vehicle will not run. And furthermore, every human being would want that their spouse also go to Jannah. So if she claims to be a Muslim, her main purpose of life is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I told you, that the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, 48, Surah Nisa chapter 4, 116, that Allah will forgive any sin, but the sin of shirk, associating partners with God, He will never forgive. So how can she have a life partner whose purpose of life is different? That means maybe you are selfish. You want to go to Jannah, but you don't want your life partner to go to Jannah. So surely, if she really loves the husband, she should put an ultimatum that if you continue, you will not go to Jannah. So put an ultimatum that if you want me, you will also get Jannah by accepting Islam. If you accept Islam, I'm with you. Otherwise, I'm not with you. So that she gets the best of this world and he also gets the best of both the world. Dr. Jakir Naik, sir, I call you to Namaste with a heart. My name is Eshudas. So my question is this way, that Islam gives so many marriages and why? Brother, that was the question that how many marriages are permitted in Islam and why? Referring to the polygamy. I want to know how many marriages are permitted in Islam and why? Referring to According to the Quran, how many marriages can you do? As far as the woman is concerned, according to Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 20 to 24, a married woman cannot marry again, so women should have only one husband maximum. As far as the other is concerned, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 3, marry women for choice in twos, threes or fours, but if you can't do justice, marry only one. You can marry two, three or four, but if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, marry only one if you can't do justice, is only given in the Quran. There's no other scripture on the face of the earth which says marry only one besides the Quran. If you read the Ramayan, if you read the Mahabharat, you can marry as many wives as you want. If you read Ramayan, the father of Ram, how many wives he had? He had more than one wife. Krishna, if you read Mahabharat, how many wives he had? Two, four, ten, thousand? 10,000, 16,108 wives. So when Krishna can have 16,108 wives, so why can't we Muslims have up to four? If you read the Bible, in the Old Testament as the New Testament, you can marry as many wives as you wish. Solomon had 700 wives. Abraham had three wives according to the Bible. It is the church which put up a limit. Christians should marry only one. It is Rabbi Ben Shemgan Hauda who passed a synod that Jews should marry only one. In India, it is the Indian Penal Code in 1954 which passed a law in Hindu Marriage Act which said that Hindus should marry only one. It is the Indian Penal Code, not the Hindu scripture, which says that Hindus should have only one wife. Let's analyze what are the reasons that Islam gives permission for a man to have more than one wife. Marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam, it's optional. But if you marry more than one wife, you should do justice between your wives. The logical reasons we can think that Islam has given permission are that male and female are born in equal proportion. But if you ask any medical doctor, any pediatrician, he will tell you that the girl, the female child, is a stronger sex medically as compared to the male child. She can fight the germs and diseases much better than a male child. So more female children are alive as compared to male children. 
as life goes on, there is death due to war, due to accident, due to cigarette smoking, due to alcohol. In all these cases, more male are dying as compared to female. So today in the world, there are more females in the world as compared to males. In few third world countries like India, etc., where the female population is less than the male population because of female infanticide and female feticide. Every year in India, more than one million fetuses are being aborted after they identified that they are females. If this evil practice stops, even in India, the male population will become less than the female population. In New York alone, there is one million female more than males. In USA alone, there are 7.8 million female more than males. In UK alone, there are four million female more than males. In Germany alone, there are five million female more than males. In Russia alone, there are nine million female more than males. And God alone knows how many millions of females are more than males throughout the world. If I agree with you that one man should only marry one woman and suppose the market is saturated and if your sister happens to live in America or my sister happens to live in America and if she happens to be one of the 7.8 million females who has not found a life partner, the only option for her is that she either marries a man who already has a wife or she becomes public property. Public property, such a harsh word. This is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot think of a better word than this. And any modest woman would say that if the option is given, she would prefer marrying a man who already has a wife or become public property. Hope that answers the question. Welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoyed the video till the last minute. The sister was asking to uh, confuse Dr. Zakir Naik, and she made a, a statement that you said that we are throwing bullets in the air, but you also sometimes uh, throw bullets in the air. So actually uh, my brother and sister the main thing is that whenever you are unable to give answer to someone or whenever you are unable to find a reason for some people to give a logic so then uh, this time you are trying to say some fake news so the girls were also making to um, uh, make a statement fake statement or a false statement regarding uh, to the doctor Zakir Naik but when doctor Zakir Naik give him a complete chance then you I give you time show me where I make mistake so then she leave the mic and she went away my dear brother and sister remember one thing that do not blame anyone who are trying to change your uh, who are trying to give you success in your life do not blame those people and he is one of them because he want uh, people to free from hell and enter into the heaven that's why he's giving dawah in different countries in different languages different people different strategy and also different kind of religion for example hinduism buddhism Jewism. you have we have seen that so many people uh, so many people from all around the world they come and they are asking different kind of question so when uh, he give a brief explanation uh, regarding his question he uh, doesn't if they doesn't understand then they are um, uh, blaming the doctor like a that he is just throwing bullets in the air no when whether whenever he give an answer of uh, any kind of thing he give a complete reference even though he know the references from the book of bible gospel of john matthew and different book from the regwed from the uh, from the uh, hindu scripture so uh, they give different kind of information from the different references. So how you can say that he, he is throwing bullets in the air? No, actually you are throwing bullets in the air because you are unable to give answer. And whenever you reason that you did not give us time. So when you give time and then you just stop that how you can prove to yourself. So my dear brother and sister, the moral of the video is that do not blame anyone who uh, give you respect or who give you time and who want to give you a successful life in this world and the day after the life so here you can find that uh, never blaming any person with the wrong information and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, clearly mentioned in the holy quran ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ijtanibu kaseeran min azwan inna ba'd azwan ismu wa la tajassasu that uh, all Muslim people do not make a bad statement about your brother or your sister because sometimes this bad statement or this bad thinking of you are about your brother and sister it uh, make a big sin so try to be positive each and every condition just be uh, positive 
and just make your thinking positive in this way uh, you will be fine a very successful life i hope you enjoy the video if you like the video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends